okay so i i think everyone understood the high availability so high availability means we will be having a two name two name nodes in the cluster one will be acting as the active name node one will be acting as a standby name node right and why we need a high availability because in the backup node we saw that if any only one name node will be there if the name node goes down there will be chances it will take more than one hour or two hours to set up a new name node right so the cluster may down for that time so we don't want the down time for the cluster so that's the reason what we will do we will set up two name nodes one will act as a, a standby i mean uh, actively another guy will be acting as a standby and we also saw there is some limitation over there we also saw there is some limitation over there that limitation is that limitation is can anyone guess what is the limitation okay so let me draw here so let me uh, draw a little bit of the little diagram here name node one and we'll be having name node two and we'll be having data node one data node two data node three four five and so on right these guys will be keep reporting to all the guys everyone will be reporting to everyone and these guys so will be having a these guys also will be reporting to him this guy is active name node this guy is standby name node these guys are the data nodes these guys will be keep sending the hard bit that we know that right so if any one of the mission goes down this guy will be taking care of the roles and so these guys will be having uh, some other node here who will take care of the merging process a backup merging process so here the limitation is if i have few number like i have a 50 or 60 no nodes well and good let's assume that i have 4000 5000 nodes so it will be more burden on the active name node or not for the all the right operations all the right operations let's say i have a very huge cluster there are so many projects are working on the same cluster so it will be burden on the this node name node or not it will be a burden on the name node very simple guys let's say if we have a, a team more than 30 members we will be having two managers let's say a testing team manager let's say a development team manager let's say a back end manager there will be multiple managers will be there because the team is very big right so to reduce the burden on to reduce the burden on one man one master or one manager we will be having a load a, a balancing the load will be having one more manager the same way here same way here there is a problem if i if your nodes are keep increasing there is a burden on your active name node there is a burden on the active name so in this case in this case how to share the work in this case we will do we will go with uh, there is something called hdfs federation hdfs federation there is something called hdfs federation what is hdfs federation why what is what does it mean what we will do here here also you will be having here you will be having two nodes two master nodes here you will be having two master nodes both are active here you will be having one guy as a master and you will be having one more master here you will be having one more master here right so how it will work how it will work it will work such a way that it will work such a way that see if we see in normal name node guys we uh, each node will be having something called uh, block storage or you can say uh, one second see this is my name node right so name node one name node one it is it's a active name node or passive name node the secondary it's a name node one it is a name node two 
right? In this name node one, you will be having something called block management service. Any name node, so respect of if it's a federation or without federation or whatever it is, even a normal cluster, even single node cluster, normal cluster, you will be having something called block management. What is the block management? Block management. So we will we'll see very detailed thing, okay? And these girls will be having his own block management. Block management. Block management. Okay, so you will you will be you know that it has it maintains the namespace information. Anyway, you have the namespace information. You have namespace information. Okay, and you will be having a you will be having a block management services. What the block management service in the name node? First, we'll try to understand. First, we'll try to understand what is the namespace. Can someone tell me? As per our discussion from the few classes, Anil. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's. I'm sorry, it's a path of the uh, blocks, like. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, it's not only the path of the block. Okay, so it also may... metadata of. Correct, right? So actually, it's a consist consist of a I node. Actually, it's I node. What it contain consists of I node? It will contain the what is your directory, what is your file. The file contains what are the blocks, what are the permissions, right? We have seen no. So what what is the permission? Yes, yes. All this information will be available in your namespace. Okay. So whatever the operations you are doing with the namespace, the namespace in uh, operations, like what are the operations we do with the cluster? Creating a file or creating a directory. Uh, I mean appending the data. There is no modification in the HDFS as of now. We cannot do a modification directly in the HDFS and appending the data. Or deleting the data these kind of operations managed by whom your namespace information that's called namespace information who will be taking care of that your namespace correct and there is something called block management there is come something called block management we'll try to understand what is a block management so the block management you uh, it's a very simple one i can say it is manages the blocks you can say it manages the block how it manages see this block is belong to which member and if the data nodes let's say you have a data nodes here right let me try a data nodes okay let's take a data nodes okay so whether i have shown you if you guys remember there is something called block pool id sometime before i have shown you the block pool id in the previous to previous class Right. So your your block management service, what it will do, it will provide the registration. Like this data has to, this data node has to pro, uh, register with this name node. No, this data node has to register with this data node, right? To send the blocks. Right. This guy has to send the heartbeats, right? Who will be taking care of that? Your block management will taking care of that. Your block management will be taking care of that so block reports maintaining the locations right so uh, what are the you know what ha what data has been created what has been modified all where the data block has been uh, the block has been loaded all the information main managed by your block management right so so each node here when i have a two name nodes when i have a two name nodes both will have a, its own block management and it will have its own block management. It will have its block management. Okay, first try to understand how it works. There, there don't there don't be any communication between these two guys guys there won't be any communication between these two guys okay we don't need communication between these two guys as well okay so first first try to uh, explain me how they're balancing the load then i'll show you the internally how it works so you will be having a two name nodes name node one and name node two 
name node one and name node two and when it's it's a very big cluster very big cluster they will share the namespace information they will share the namespace what the namespace will they will share let's say i have something called slash root okay this is my path i'll be i'll be keep going to put any data in this path i'll be having one more path let's say slash share so i'm just taking these two example it can be anything else okay here if whenever is trying to put a data under this this will handle by this guy and whenever trying to put data by this will handle by this you may ask ravi i will be writing a query in a hdf uh, hdfs client in the client machine the the query will be my source destination is slash root let's assume that and so on something if it is a slash root your client knows that to whom it has to connect if it is the same command slash share your client knows to which data node it which, which name node it has to connect so here if any data is going to under root directory as a parent any data is going to under share as a parent the date based on the location based on the namespace information or based on the name the data are loading the both name nodes will work in this case you may ask what about a backup so your name node one have its own backup or name node two can have its own backup or the same high availability can take care of the both the things but it can have its own uh, we can have a, that such kind of configuration so name node one can have its own configuration which is high availability name node two also can have its own high availability can configuration because it's a very huge cluster it's not a very small cluster it's a, when it's a very huge cluster so it, it's very difficult to manage by one person to all the operations suppose if you're trying to do any read operation on the root directory this guy will take care of if you're trying to do any share uh, the, the name node will take it so if you're trying to do any uh, read operation or write operation in the shared drive name node 2 will take care of it is this point is clear everyone someone is asking the question could you please repeat Uh, Ravi, uh, Lakshmi here. I had a question. Yeah. So when you mentioned there will be two name nodes uh, mm -hmm. in the active name node, so will the standby name node also will have two name nodes? No, 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 no. Here. No. Okay. This is one name node, right? You can have its own, your own high availability. He can have his own high availability or backup or whatever it is. He can take care of his own high availability. He can have his own high availability. Okay. He can have his own backup node. Okay. you can have so it's it's like two different clusters but all are reporting to each other except these two nodes these guys will not there won't be any communication between these two guys but all data nodes are communicating with both the dame nodes like let's say we okay. have a big team okay 60 members of team is there one development team testing team so in the testing we have a 20 members in the development we have a 40 members so all are belong to a single team only but if anything specific work related to testing they will that his manager will take care there is a one work specific to a development team this manager will take care correct but when it comes to the global work when to when you look at the very high level both are belong to a single team or single project yes or no yeah yes so so your manager the testing manager may have his own backup his own team lead yeah our development team manager will have his, his own lead or his own backup Yeah. Yes. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So someone was asking another question. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, Ravi. Anil here. Yeah, Anil. Uh, Ravi, uh, in the client, when I specify uh, uh, my destination folder is root or share, mm -hmm. so based on the destination folder, uh, the respective name node will take care of that one, right? Correct. Correct. So how how actually uh, it identifies which name node uh, uh, that I uh, uh, have to Use. I mean, whether it's configured somewhere or yeah, it is configured. We have to configure everything. We have to configure. I'll I'll show you the configuration now. Okay. 
I'm I'm going to do it. Okay, so okay. It will be configured. It will be configured in the client or uh, in the no. name node itself. F first thing, uh, I mean, uh, before that, answering your question, uh, Anil, you try to rem uh, try to understand that whatever the configuration you do, the configuration should mm -hmm. be similar in all the machines, all the machines, irrespective okay. of the client or master or slave. Okay. Okay. If you're doing any configuration chain, that should be similar across the cluster. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. Okay. Any other question? I think someone was asking some doubt. Okay. So now, how it will work? The right question is asked by Anil. So how it will work? Let's see how internally it works. How internal it works? Let's look at guys here. So now I'm not going to take care of uh, the. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to draw uh, the data nodes. I'll be drawing only the name. Let's see here. It's a name node one. I'll be drawing one more. Name node two. If you observe here, these are acting like a two different clusters or not? This guy, when you look at from the name node one perspective, he will say, "This is my team." Sorry, guys. I'm looking at a screen and I'm drawing in my notepad. So the, I mean text uh, pen pad. So, so when you look at from his point of view, he will say this is my team, right? It means he will be having his own ID. And when you look at the prospect of this guy, name no two, he will say. This is my team. This is my team. He will say this is my team. He will say this is. It means they are acting as a two different clusters. It means they will be having their own cluster ID. Their own cluster ID. So based on the cluster ID, the data nodes will be identifying to whom I am connecting now. To whom I have connected. In this case, your data node will be having a two cluster IDs. In this case, in the federations, you will be have your cluster, your uh, uh, data nodes will be having a two cluster IDs, and and let's go down, and so as I said, this guy will have his own cluster ID. It is my mouse. This guy will have his own cluster ID. Let's say I say CID. CID is nothing but cluster ID, and he will be having his own CID cluster ID. At the same, along with that. Along with that, this guy, you guys, we we saw that this guy has his own namespace. This guy also has his own namespace. Guys, not only two name nodes, you can have any number of name nodes. This, they uh, Hadoop 2 has given that flexibility to you based on your cluster size. You can ho go ahead and keep any number of name nodes. Okay, and at the same time, he will be having his own block manager. Or block management service, right? And he will also he will be having his own block management service. The block management service will be identifying which block is belong to whom, right? Uh, and inside the block management, you will be having something called block pool ID. Block pool ID. Block pool. He will be having one block pool, and he will be having his own block pool. He will be having his block pool, and he will be having his own block pool. It means actually, in the cluster environment, it is singular block pool only, but their IDs are different. Their IDs are different. So actually, it's a single block pool only, but their IDs are different. So what are the layer here? I'm showing you. It is a block pool. So he will be having his own block pool ID. He will be having his own block pool ID. Okay. Now your data nodes will be maintaining the block pool IDs. Your data nodes will be maintaining this one block pool IDs. Yes or no? I have shown in the last class if you guys remember. 
so based on that block pool id based on that block pool id okay i'm going to put the data into this as soon as you submit a data as soon as you query as soon as you send a query it will understand based on the data it is going to which block pool like slash share or slash root based on this it will identify it will it will get the block pool right this guy will have his own block pool and this guy has his block block pool id based on this it will identify the which block i'm going to which block i'm going to right so what are the file you are keeping here will be having the same block pool ID for whole Amazon data.txt. So it means, it means all the data is going to store in the data nodes will be reporting to whom? Name node one. Are you guys clear? They will be having a block pool IDs. Based on the block pool IDs, they will be identifying whether I'm going to name node one or name node two. Any doubt about the block pool ID in cluster ID? Any doubt about the block pool ID in cluster ID? Uh, hi, Pira. Can you please repeat uh, one state cluster ID and block pool ID? Difference between that uh, cluster ID and block pool ID? Okay. The cluster ID is a unique number for each day name node. Cluster ID is a unique identification number for each name node. Okay. And the same cluster ID will be there with the, your data nodes also. Okay, if it is a single node cluster, the data nodes will be having a only one cluster ID. Only one cluster ID. Let me show you guys here. Let the screen go. Okay, first let me show in the name node. Okay, do you guys see something here? Something called cluster ID? Do you guys see something called namespace ID here? For this, I have only one name node, one data node here, right? That's why I have only one namespace ID. I have only one cluster ID, correct? And there is something called block pool ID. There is something called block pool ID. This is called block pool ID, right? This is for name node. On which machine we are looking at this file? Which file we are looking? this file which is there in the name node current that file we are looking now look at the data node file look at the data node file if you guys remember see the this block pool id that block pool id unique or not this block pool id start with a 341757358 right you look at this block pool id here there is a folder called block pool id no 341757358 is the same or not both are same very good Let's go ahead and look at here. Now, this is name node. This is data node. Okay, now I'm going to show you what cluster ID. Look at the cluster ID here. Look at the cluster ID here. Okay, let me put both in a single page. Name nodes. Sorry. It's a name nodes information. Data node information I'm going to show you here. I don't want to make you confuse by seeing two different files. Look at in the same file. Now look at guys here. This namespace ID, this namespace ID same or not? Sorry, this is storage ID. Uh, let me show you here. The name is not namespace ID, cluster ID. This cluster ID and this cluster ID same or not? Namespace ID will be the name node. Namespace ID will not be there in the data node. Uh, okay. This cluster ID, this cluster ID is same or not? You can search, right? And 
this block pool id this block pool id this block pool id and the directory which you have seen here are same or not if you want to i can also uh, get it the rename the file name and i'll copy this name and i can paste it here for for sake of understanding now look at here this block pool id and this block pool id same or not both are same right and layout versions don't worry what is the version of this name node uh, uh, has the version number and what is the version number version number is not hadoop software version the name node uh, this file version like how many times uh, the version will be keep changing guys I, and how it is changing i really don't know so i never look into the source code of this i really don't know how it will be changing okay and the namespace id it has its own namespace id it has its own cluster id if i create a multi node cluster actually i'm planning to create a multi node cluster i'll be creating multi node cluster here now so not now and the going forward i'll be showing you a multi node cluster here so i have one more uh, machine is machine is there so i'll be keeping two more machines i'll be i'll be uh, going to create a multi node cluster that time i will upload one multi node cluster video and i'll show you that namespace id cluster id and everything for you guys to make to understand the in, you know detail okay so this is how the communication happens this storage type is name node this storage type is data node because it is here the data node is store, data is storing the data node this here the data is what are the metadata information storing in the name node any doubts till here any doubts till here Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So okay. Uh, one second. Yeah. One second, Krishna. Um, okay. Let's go with uh, question and answer because we have started a little late today. Let's go with the question and answer. Ravi Krishna here. Yeah, Ravi, Krishna. have you shown? Yes, there is a uh, in name node. Uh, there is one blo uh, block pool you are showing, mm. and there is a common block pool for uh, both name nodes. So now no, the data that is node not, that is, is a, that layer will call is a block pool. But the whatever I show I shown was a block pool ID. See, actually, okay, maybe you might have confused by seeing the diagram like this. Let me. Okay, let me, let me extend my name node uh, till here. This is how it looks. Okay, the layer, whatever the layer is, is actually block pool layer, but inside that we'll be having a block pool IDs. So, is there any limitation for the block pool? Limitation means the so data storage limitation. A, the block size. No. Yes, the block size. No, block size across the same. No, okay. block size is same for across the cluster. Okay. 64 MB or 120 MB. That is same. The, coming to the how much data this can store? Yes, that limitation is uh, anyway you are giving some threshold. No, I told you right. So how how much data this node can store? How much data this can this cluster HDFS cluster based on the spaces of your hard disks? You will come to one threshold. If my cluster completed 50% of the storage, let's go ahead and add the new machines. So there won't be any scenario one node will be full and other node will be free there won't be any scenario that uh, that kind of scenario in the hadoop cluster krishna uh, uh, am i answered your question okay, yeah. yeah yeah thank you Any any questions, guys? Hi, Ravi. Uh, this is Jerry here. Hi, uh, can you please explain the threshold? I just uh, yeah, I just don't not get the concept of threshold part. Okay. Hold the threshold something. Like. Okay. The threshold part is when you are configuring this, they are based on the data uh, data node size, this hard disk size, this hard disk capacity, this hard disk capacity, this hard disk capacity. Based on this, those hard disk capacity will come to know our conclusion. One concludes like let's say this is one TB, this is one TB, this is 500, and this is 500. So what is my total size now? The two TB, three TB. 
okay my total size is 3 tb so i cannot occupy all 3 tb data all 3 tb storage i cannot occupy because this data node will have its own file system this data node also will have its own its own data uh, file system for storing other things apart from hdfs this machine also will have its own file system to store anything else right so in this case our space is 300 gb i mean 3 tb our space is 3 tb to make use of the hdfs right but we, we never use we never use complete we'll try to always configure something some configuration if you ask me the configuration number i didn't remember really the con will configure such a way that in the 3 tb if it comes to 50 percentage or we will give some threshold some uh, some point right i can say so any of the node is reaching to that let's say it was 1 tb right if any one of the node is reaching to 500 it will start keep sending the alerts to okay we, uh, there is a necessity for you uh, know uh, increasing the new data nodes that kind of configuration is available in the data nodes uh, am i clear your answer jayda uh, yeah, yeah Ravi, I'm clear right now. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? Ravi? Yeah? Yeah, this is Chandra Ravi. Chandra, tell me. Yeah, you are saying CAD is the unique number, na? Correct. Uh, when I going to black full one and then NS2 is uh, black two, na? So unique will be allows uh, is, is is not allowed to not duplicate na. So no, no, no. CAD is uh, Chandra, Chandra. Black, black one will oh, yeah. Sorry to stop you. Cluster ID is unique. I understand. I, I hear only that yeah. point. Okay. What is your question? I didn't hear. Okay. Could you please repeat your question? In uh, black node, different uh, ID. Will, you mentioned same do CAD in, in uh, black uh, node one will be same na. No. Black one and then black. Uh, one Ready? second. This cluster will have its own ID. Let's say this cluster ID is one. This cluster will be two. Okay. Okay. And your blocks will okay. be having ID as one comma two. Here also one comma two. Here also one comma two. Here also one comma two. Now, when the data comes to for the specific uh, cluster based on the block pool ID, which cluster I have to pick, I'll go and pick that cluster. Okay, uh, uh, CAD will be, uh, it's created to, uh, different, not for different, different, no, CADs. CADs? You are saying name node and then uh, data node, no? Oh, correct. Yeah, and name node, be, uh, name node will be one uh, CAD, okay? Name node will have one cluster ID. Name node will have its uh, own cluster yes, ID. Yes, yes. Yes, uh, data node will be another ID, uh, another ID or same same ID. Um, I, I lost. I mean, I am not able to understand what you are trying to ask, Chandra. Could you please re repeat uh, once again? No, and, uh, okay, and name node will be one uh, create one CAD. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Uh, when I going to uh, uh, name uh, data node, it's hmm. create one ID. Okay. Okay. So uh, name node and then data node will be the uh, CID will be same or uh, same. Uh, different? Same CID. Same, na? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. How do I identify this is uh, the, uh, which one is a name node, which one is a data node? So we have to specify that while we are setting up the cluster. That cluster, oh. while you while are setting up the cluster, this IP, this machine you are taking as a, a master node, this mission, these missions are I'm taking as a data nodes, I will specify based on the configurations, I mean based on the my requirement, like I have a very good mission, one mission is there, rest of the normal commodity missions, the good mission I'll take it as a name node because it's a single point of failure. So the IP address I'll take, the IP address I'll take when I'm configuring for the master slave or master slaves, that IP address I'll make it as a master IP address. Okay, okay. Okay. Thanks, sir. Yep. Any other questions? Ravi Krishna here. Yeah, Ravi, go ahead, Krishna. Small doubt. Huh? Yeah. 
Yes, here the data uh, data nodes. Is there any limitation, or else we can able to uh, able to configure how many number of for one name node? And the second question is. Uh, oh, no, no, no. First, we'll the first question. Krishna, first we'll go with the first question. What is the first question? When? For each, mm -hmm. for each name node, mm -hmm. is there any limitation for uh, the data node? There is some extent no. of limit. No, no limitation like that. Okay, and the second question is uh, when we configure the data node. First, mm -hmm. con first we configure one single data node. Okay. My data is very less, mm -hmm. and the second day, few days after that, I configure the second node, mm -hmm. data node, mm -hmm. and is there automatically it will take it will fetch us the name node. We if we or else we need to configure this one also manually. We have, we have to configure here. We have to while while see okay here the the gap what I understood when you were put, putting this this is our Linux machine this is the Linux machine let's assume that work time being okay in this machine when you install Hadoop software you will be specifying what is your master to connect correct and when you are bringing this machine second time in this master you will be having something called DFS dot hosts there is something called DFS dot hosts there you should give the file of which has the IP addresses that IP addresses that IP address should contain this mission IP address it means this machine should have Hadoop software as well as the same configuration also should be there here so this machine will identify this is my master okay you need to manually log into this machine start all the services start all the services all the services means your name node, data node service and the task track service you don't need to start the name node and all because this, this machine is meant for only data node now you go to your uh, client and start executing refresh nodes when you say refresh nodes your your manager will identify this is also my client I mean this is also my slave okay and this is already as anyways a slave that is the answering your question to another uh, other question what I'm raising here so the whole data was there in this machine whole data was there in this machine so this newly configured machine this is newly configured machine then how the data will come here you, ha you have to go with the balancer you have to go with the balancer you have to execute the balancer command am I cleared your doubt Krishna yes sir. thank you Yeah, Ravi. Yeah. Uh, actually, in this discussion, we explained about the HDFS federation, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, it is basically when a, uh, active name node um, and the data nodes, when it will be having 50% of more than that, then we will be moving on with the HDFS feder federation. No. Hmm. Not like that. Not like that. And. Uh, I mean, when we when the data nodes will be increasing, then we will be moving on to this concept of. So, if we have a more spread. data nodes, if we have a hundreds of data nodes, that will be more okay. burden on the active name node. Okay, okay. He mm -hmm. cannot manage the all the places wherever the data you have stored. You are storing the data in a share and root everywhere you are storing the data. So, your name node one cannot handle it. So then we will go with the federation to specifying that you handle with only share, other guy handle with the root. Like that we will specify. Okay, then where this HDFS federation will be created, I mean uh, it will be created separate regardless of this active name node or something else. No, see this is a plain name node now. This is also plain name node. So your uh, mm -hmm. your backup nodes or your HDFS, uh, HDFS high availability and all you have to configure again for each node or you can have only common mm. you can you can have your own system which you have developed your own which is not part of the Hadoop you can you can also do that you can fetch the uh, metadata from here you can also fetch the metadata from here you can keep as a backup that can also be done mm -hmm. so regardless of that one we should manually create all yes. this type of uh, yes. HFS Very correct yes okay. yeah. thank you Ramira. okay Ravi, 
Uh, in this uh, federation, mm -hmm. uh, when we configure that uh, I availability, uh, mm -hmm. there will uh, there will be one more system, right? Uh, it's, uh, Correct. Um, so the cluster ID for uh, this name node and that node will be same in that case. So cluster that that case, okay, very good question. So this guy should have its own cluster, uh, his, his own federation, and that guy should have his his own federation. So that time the cluster ID will be that cluster ID, right? Respect to cluster IDs. Uh, for example, name node one mm -hmm. is having uh, uh, one. Uh, what is that? The other one. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I forgot the name. The other cluster ID. Name node in IO availability. In IO availability, stand by name other one will come. Stand by name. Sorry, yeah, stand by node. Okay. So uh, the name node one is having one stand by no, uh, name node. Mm -hmm. So that both the both the uh, systems will come under one cluster, right? Correct. So now the cluster ID for this name node and the standby name node must be same, right? Correct. Yeah, it will be same, right? Yes. Okay, all right. Okay, guys, and one more uh, tip here for everyone. Uh, suppose if you want to find any uh, uh, references, Apache references really good. Apache references, Apache book is uh, Apache itself. They have released their own. Uh, uh, release uh, uh, what you say documents along with the software right so apache even uh, cloudera also given a very nice book so hard works also is giving very nice notes okay apache documents for hdfs go this even Harton works also gives, but you can you can strongly believe on this because this is the co this is the origin of Hadoop, right? So this is what we were discussing since morning. I mean, since class started, you guys can have a look here. This makes your doubts uh, clear. And the part what we need to discuss is this the configuration part. And if you remember, yeah. So I thought to explain this configuration. That anyway, I'll be con explaining it tomorrow. Okay, these configurations, if you see, if you see here, the name nodes I'm creating two, name node one, name node two, I mean actually namespace, namespace services are, and your name node RPC address is dot ns1, dot ns2, see here, there are two, it means one is for specific to this, this name node host and IP port number, this, this name node, oh, sorry, this name node, IP address and port number and his, his own again his secondary name node his his own secondary name node and that guy's first one second own secondary name node you can configure like that okay so what was I was trying to explain you here if you see they will be having respect to names for his, uh, configurations for each and every one so this guy can have name node one can have his own edits name node one can have his own checkpoint directories name node one can have how many of uh, 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 how many what to say fs image has to keep name node 2 he has his own configurations because now they are acting as two different clusters they are acting as a two different clusters but the blog data nodes are same the machines are same but the services are different the only thing we need to understand here two different clusters two different is one cluster only but they're acting as a two different clusters when it comes to the name node point of view when it comes to data node point of view they are a single single machines but the two different services okay so secondary name node you can configure with this you have to specify dot ns1 dot ns2 dot ns1 dot ns2 and here in the backup node dot ns1 dot ns2 any doubt still i think i have completed the configuration part as well here so i think i can go with a new topic tomorrow I mean, tomorrow in the sense, next class. There is no class tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday. If anyone wants to talk to me personally, please give me a call a bit early. Uh, we can connect one to one. If anyone, anyone, anyone or any group of people. Okay. So that's it for today. If you guys have any doubts, please let me know.